saints. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercies endureth forever. Hallelujah. Uh, we just want to welcome you this morning to New Life, Apostolic Church of God. Uh, and we want to invite you to come in this morning, open up your hearts, your minds, lay your worries aside, and praise ye the Lord. For well, the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. So we want to get in the, uh, the spirit of praise this morning and give God the glory, give him honor, and worship him in the beauty of holiness. At this time, we'll ask Brother uh, Minister Elder Birch if he will come and lead us in prayer. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you, O God, for this day. This is the day that you have made to come and rejoice in you. God, we know that you're able, you have all power. We thank you, God, for what you've done. We ask you, Lord, to remember all those who are not here or unable, Lord, to attend or to come to wish you. We ask you to remember our pastor that's made in the absence. God, this is a day, a special day for me. I thank you, O God, for celebration. I thank you, O God, for the whole Ghost. In the name of Jesus, you said every knee shall bow yes. and every tongue shall confess. Hallelujah. So we confess the Lord that we know that you're able, that all the sick and all the family, yes, you bless all those who are sick of mamas and those who are unable to turn home. You say, enter into your cup of thanksgiving, O God, and into the praise. We come and praise you. We just come and pray. Yes. Looking for to hear the word, Lord. We ask your God to remember our speaker for today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, in our faith. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I pray. We know that we have doubt sometimes, you know, God, but we know that every day that Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Hallelujah. And we thank you once again. Oh God, you're crazy. Thank you. Remember those who've been baptized in the name, have received your name. Holy Ghost. Remember the old, old God who backslid. Oh God, if you say no, we spit it out, Lord, and we slide back, oh God, we know Jesus. Forgive him, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He will shut down and come. In the name of Jesus. We pray. We pray. Lead us in God so we know that we do it right. That we walk, Lord. Oh God, through the word, yes. Lord, and yes. listen here. It was here to hear what the Spirit had to say unto the church. Yes. On this day, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Remember, brother, Lord, Lord yes. in a special way. Thank in Jesus' you. name, we pray. Amen. 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 Please remain standing as we read this morning's scripture. And this morning's scripture will come from the book of Psalms. Psalms 100. Hallelujah. It's a familiar psalm for most of us. Psalms 100. We pray that it will set the tone for this day. This is a day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 100. When you have it, would you say amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Let's read that again. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. All together. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Make a joyful noise. 
Hallelujah. At this time, we'll ask her stay forth to come and lead us in a praise and worship service. Let's receive her with a hearty amen. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we have one among us that is able, more than able, to rightly divide the word of truth. To let you know that God is able, hallelujah. And God is our all in all. Hallelujah. So I pray that you would sit quietly and attentively with us and with me as we uh, listen to and I present to you the speaker of this hour, Elder Calvin Cooper. Amen. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. 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 We want you to pray for him this morning. Hallelujah. Please pray for him. Hallelujah. 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 God will give him. Hallelujah. What is able to keep us and yes. to sustain us. Yes. And God knows what we have yes. need of. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I'll provide <laughs> Elder Calvin Cooper. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for standing before you this morning. I thank God for being here. Each time I stand before the people of God, I will always acknowledge my pastor, mm. Pastor James Anderson. All right. I thank God because it is an honor to stand before the people of God, whether to minister the word of God or teach the word of God. I would always give honor to my pastor for allowing me the opportunity to do this. It is something that truly I do not take lightly. All right. I think that as we go for the lesson today, sometimes you get a lesson, a word, that is just for you. And as a minister, and I believe every minister, as you study the Word of God, mm -hmm. there is a time when you get a message and you say, well, Lord, this is a good message here. And Lord, this message is stirring me up. Mm -hmm. and, and Lord, I want to just, and then you realize sometimes that that message is just for you. All right. All right. So as I begin to go through a time in my life, I want to share with you a message that the Lord gave to Calvin. I pray that as I go forth today, that this word will encourage you. Okay. But it took me through a time, and the word took me to a place where I totally had to lean on God. Mm -hmm. So if you will stand with me in your word, we're going to go through several scriptures, but we'll start off first. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, and we're going to begin at verse number 5. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, we shall read verses 5 and 6. And I ask you to pray with me, and I pray that as I stand here, that God will give you something in the word. Sometimes people say, well, that message won't for me. Mm. Well, maybe every message may not be for you. Mm. Well, but I pray that you find something in the scripture All right. All right. that is for you. Amen. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse number 5, we should read 5 and 6. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But they that are after the spirit the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life Hallelujah. and peace. Hallelujah. All right. You may be seated there. Hallelujah. So with the help of the Lord today, we're going to talk a little bit about life and peace. You see, as I began to look at the Word of God and going through a time in my life, I realized that in our life there are all kinds of danger signs out there. 
you can go back and look at their, their signs of keep away, animals, high voltage, hill, curve. There's all kind of danger signs out there to warn us to be careful. There's all kind of signs that you see, warning signs, danger signs. There's a sign out there that says wild animals, be careful. There's, you can think of all kind of signs out there. But there is one sign that's not out there. One sign. Sure, there are many, but there's one that pertains to me. Of all the danger signs out there that you have, the sign that I wore for a while, and nobody could see it, but I wore this sign. It said, danger. My mind is on the loose. Oh, wow. Oh, Lord. And because of all the preachers out there, you can think about a mad dog, a lion, and everything out there. But the most dangerous creature that's in existence today is the human mind. Mm -hmm. We can create all kinds of pattern on people, circumstances, and situations. And I use that as a subject today. Danger. My mind is on the loose. And as I go forth, you'll say, well, what is he talking about? <laughs> You see, I said that this is a lesson that I had to go back and preach to myself. When I look at the Word of God, and I'm going back to the scripture that we read in Romans, where it says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, there was a time that I went through, I didn't have peace. And I want to go with you, and I want you to turn with me to the book of Isaiah. And I want to take my time, and I want to read this to you. And it'll, it'll make sense after a while, I pray for the whole. But Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. It says, Thou would keep him. Uh -huh. Thou would keep him mm -hmm. in perfect peace. Perfect. It says what? Perfect. Perfect, perfect peace. Uh -huh. Who's what? Mind. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who's what? Mind. Who's what? Mind. Who's mind is staying on thee because he trusted in thee. Thou would keep him in perfect peace if your mind, if your mind is stayed on him. Hallelujah. In November of last year, and I told my wife I was going to share this. In November of last year, we had all kinds of problems in our home. The water line had busted from the street coming in and it was flooding the basement. So my wife knew a plumber. She called the plumber. The plumber came out and said, I can fix it. I said, okay. And I'm like, how much is going to charge me? He said, it's going to cost you roughly about $2,000 to get this fixed. So he says, but I got to buy material, and I got to buy parts and, and labor and all this, so I need a down payment. I said, okay, because when your basement is flooding, it's not a question of how much, it's like, let's get the job done. <laughs> so the basement is flooding. He says, I need a down payment of $1,500. So I write him a check for $1,500. As I wrote him a check for fifteen hundred, I'm waiting for him to come and fix the basement. Mm. 
I'm waiting for him to come and fix the leak in the basement. He come by the house and say, I gotta get this and I gotta get that and I gotta get this and, and days go by and I gotta get the city to come out here and plant flags in the ground whereas I can get gas. I say, okay, that, that sounds reasonable right there. I gotta get the gas company to come by here and put the flags out over here so I can, before I can start digging over here. So in the meantime, my wife and I are down here with a bucket shoving the water out the basin. Now, Days went by and he didn't do the job. And as days went by, Brother Cooper was getting angry. Now I want to go back to Romans. Keep your hand there. And I said, because I want to come back. But in Romans, chapter 8, verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see, I didn't have no peace. I would see this guy, and this gentleman took me for $1,500. And as a minister of the gospel, I know the word. I have preached the word. I have taught the word. When I told you that there was a sign around my neck that said danger, my mind was on the loose, Cooper's mind was on the loose. Yeah. And because my mind was on the loose, I went carnal. Now I'm going to talk about, I'm going to preach alone myself today. I went carnal. I went to hunt him down. Now he said that I went to hunt. Because you took me for fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm coming after you. And the scriptures, like I said, I know the word of God. I preach the word of God. I talk the word of God. But over there in Isaiah, it said, "I will keep you in perfect peace." What? I will keep you in perfect peace. In what? If your mind is what? If your mind is what? If your mind is staying on Jesus, well, guess what? Cooper's mind won't stay on Jesus. Amen. Cooper was on the hunt. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, I'm going to talk about my own self here. Couldn't find it. I was looking for it. And one day, my wife, you know, we found out where his girlfriend stayed or his mother stayed or the one up stayed. And look here. Well, well, one night, one night, I came on out the house with some stuff. I'm going to use Pastor's favorite word, some stuff. Went down to girlfriend, mom's house, whatever house she was, knocking on the door. Man. I could see the lights on and the dog barking, but nobody answered the door. Man. Man. <laughs> Man. Wife said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what I tell you? I had a sign around my neck. Dang it. Because whoever came around me, danger. Because my mind was not functioning. You took me for $1,500 and I'm coming after you. Nobody answered the door. Went home. The scripture was in my mind. Say, so you need to trust in the Lord. Say, so you need to trust in God. You need to let it go, Calvin. As a minister of the gospel, you need to let it go. Uh-uh, Lord. Uh-uh, Lord. Lord talking, I'm saying, uh-uh. He took me, and I'm going to take him. And then I begin to say, now wait a minute, now, Calvin, wait a minute. Now, if you go down there and do what you want to do, then you're going to bring disgrace upon the church and then you got to go to that face, Sister Edgeworth, where she working it down there. 
And I'm saying, now, what you gonna look like facing her, facing somebody else, cause you are all up in you. And I'm all up in Calvary. And I'm down here saying, but Lord, Lord, he took me. And I hunted him, couldn't find him, and went back to the world up over there. And the world was telling me to leave it alone and let it go. And I was saying, no, Lord. I'm saying, no, Lord. Now, I don't know if you understand this. The Lord talked to you, you talking back. I'm like some small little brat child out there. And so, I get over here. Now, I want you to go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse number 5. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse number 5. If you got it, we'll read it. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 5. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto thee, Speak. Thus speak the Lord. Thus have you said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Now the word of God said, look at here, Cooper. I know not what's in your mind, but I know what's coming into your mind. That's the word I said, look at it. People don't say, well, God knows what's in your mind. No, the word of God said, I know what's coming into your head before it even gets there. So I began to sit down here and go in and I said, Lord Jesus, I said, and then my stomach knotting up, balling it up. I'm thinking I got ulcer out there. And I mean, I laid out that night, can't sleep in here. And the word of God said, whose mind is stayed on this? That I will give you perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me and you trust me. If your mind is stayed on me and you trust me. And I'm down here, Lord! So finally, one night, I'm down here, the stomach is balling up. I mean, all of them. All of them. Laying in the bed, can't sleep. I'm thinking I'll also just turn me up inside. So finally, I can be in pain. Let me tell you something. Pain is not from the Lord. Pain comes with stress. Pain comes with stress. Pain Pain comes with stress. Stress brings pain in the body. And I get down there. Two o'clock in the morning. I'm down here some nights thinking, if I catch it, what am I going to do? Never did find it. And I give credit to God for that. Because I sure don't want to see some sad words. Two o'clock in the morning, one night, I'm laying in bed. Stomach is acting up, toe up. And finally I said, Lord! Threw my hands up in the bed and said, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. I'm going to stop fighting you. And I'm going to put my trust in you. Lord, I surrender. Because I was fighting God. My mind was in a carnal state. And when I threw my hands up in the bed, and say, Lord, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I let it go. Lord, I will let it go. And when I said that, the pain in my body went away because I was carrying all this anger, all this anxiety. Trying to do it my way. The scripture said in Romans, when you're spiritually minded, life and death is when you're spiritually minded. See, my mind was out there. And let me tell you something. When you have lost control of your mind, you hurt people. Not intentionally. But because you hurt, you want to see others hurt. 
You don't care about sometimes what you say, what you do, because of your mind. You have lost spiritual control of your mind. And that's when you're condemned, and that's when you're in jeopardy of losing your life, your spiritual life, because life and death is in the word. And that night, I got my life back. That night, that night, I got my life back. That side that I was worried to say danger, Cooper's mind is on the loose, I took that bad boy off. Because I got my mind back, bro. And let it go. Let, hey, $1,500. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Now, do you think that's the end of the story? Say, oh, no. The rest of the story. Got my mind, got my mind straight. Got the word in me. Right. Got the word back. Right. It says, and I, I will go with that scripture over there. And I will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect. Whose mind is stayed on him. Who trusted. Hear that when that word trust come in. Uh -huh. Who trusted. So I'm, I'm good. I'm focused. I'm good. Got my life. Got the word. All right. So one day I'm riding down the street. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and I see you. <laughs> well, honey, for weeks, never could find it. Uh -huh. Time to get my mind where I'm at. And then I see him. Amen. And first day, the father said, There he is. <laughs> there he is. Uh -huh. And then the spirit of God said, Keep on going. Uh -huh. Don't turn around. Uh -huh. Don't look back. Uh -huh. Just keep going. Uh, and at that point, I knew I had let it go. Because uh, we cry for a different story. Uh, I say this to encourage you. Uh, there are things that you're hanging on to. Uh, you need to let it go. Uh, it's easy to say let it go. Uh, it's easy. Uh, People were telling me, let it go. Uh, Give it to God. Trust in God. Uh, that was encouraging. But sometime inside of you, you feel like that that ain't enough, God. Uh -huh. And I thank God for being God, because God could have smacked them side the head, left them right in all kind of ways. Uh -huh. But God knows Cooper. Uh -huh. He had patience. Yes, he did. Oh, but I encourage you with the word that I learned. Yeah. If there's something in your life that you're hanging on to uh -huh. that's causing you to have sleepless, and restless nights. Let it go. Let it go. Because all it's going to do is harm you. And it's going to place your soul in danger. It's going to place your soul. Because that word of God over there, as I read in the Ezekiel, said this I know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I know what's coming into your head before you even get there. Yeah. So when you think something now, God, I already know what's coming your way. Yes. And I already know what you're going to think. Mm -hmm. We can't hide from God. I close with the scripture that we said earlier. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this one more time. It's in Isaiah. We read it. We know it. Thou would keep him. Thou would keep him. In perfect peace. Perfect peace. That's peace with God. That's that spiritual peace. That's salvation. That will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind? And that's the key right there. Whose mind is stayed on thee? Because he trusted in thee. You want peace in your life? Mm -hmm. You've got to keep your mind on God. Amen. You can't worry about, he hurt me. She hurt me. <clears throat> he stole from me. He took from me. Mm -hmm. you got to say, Lord, I put it into your hands. 
Lord, I trust you. You see, I was trying to fight that battle myself. You can't do that. God will keep you. Saints, I close with this as they will come up. Whatever it is that you're hanging on to, whatever it is that you're trying to fight the battle yourself, whether it's physical, natural, whether it's spiritual, whether it's family, friends, relatives, whatever it is that you hung on to trying to fight that battle yourself, mm -hmm. you got to let it go. Yeah, let it go. Mm -hmm. Because to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Amen. That's not Brother Cooper's words. That's God's words. Amen. Life and peace Amen. if you're spiritual minded. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen.